Hi, I'll be teaching you how to make your webtoon look more professional. Disclaimer, some of my tips may not suit your webtoon aesthetic and that's totally cool. I'm just sharing some advice on how to present your webtoon in a more pleasing way for your readers and get these types of comments. Just for your self-satisfaction. But firstly, the $100 million question. Does art style matter? In my opinion, yes. Wait, 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 before any of you guys come with me with your pitchforks, let's put it this way. There's a reason why the manhua or anime art style is popular on webtoon and other webcomic platforms. It's easy to digest, pleasing to look at for majority of readers, and for artists, it's simple enough to draw and replicate. Though it does not mean it's better, it's just what most people gravitate towards. Of course, there are many webtoons that are successful, with unique art styles like these, so I can't speak for all cases. But for me, art style is important for the first impression, and plot is what makes people stay and continue to read. God knows how many webtoons I've dropped with breathtaking art styles, but with trash plot and characters. So basically, you need a balance of both. Now that's out of the way, here are ways to make your webtoon look more professional. Number 1. Clean Line Art If you noticed, most originals webtoons have crisp clean line art that are so thin and perfect. I actually wonder how stable their hands are like. Look at that. Obviously, it takes time, a lot of time, to make it all neat and clean so I don't try to make my lining so perfect. An easy way to line your panels is to use the vector layer on the Clip Studio Paint program, which I personally use to make my webtoon. You can easily erase and clean up stray lines with a tap and readjust your strokes by moving the control points. Number two is large speech bubbles. If you read a lot of webtoons, you'll notice that the speech bubbles take at least a third or half of the phone screen size, maybe even the full screen. This is to make your text legible and clear for readers. Most people read on their phones, so while we may think that the text is large enough, it might be minuscule on the phone, so you have to keep that in mind. Plus, there is a certain way to place your text in your bubbles. For me, I just use the default bubble tool on Clip Studio. Some people like to make their own, to each their own. Then I just place my dialogue. So my rule of thumb is to leave a gap between the text and the bubble so that it doesn't look too cramped. And with each bubble, I recommend putting a maximum of two sentences and make a new one for the next sentence. A new one meaning a new bubble. Make sure not to put too many speech bubbles for a panel, around two to three bubbles max. You can space it out since this is a vertical scroll format. You essentially have a limitless amount of space in comparison to traditional format of comics, like comic books. Number 3. Choosing the correct font I've seen so many webtoon artists make this beginner mistake and that is using Comic Sans. Seriously, I think every webtoon video already mentioned this to be honest. Why? It just doesn't look nice on the eyes, and to me, it shows that you're a beginner comic artist, I'm sorry. But I'm telling you now not to use it so that you won't turn away potential readers. You can search up popular comic fonts that people like to use and see what you like and what fits your theme of your comic. These are some that I use, you may screenshot it for reference. You should also keep your fonts consistent for each of its uses so that your webtoon doesn't look messy and unorganized. Number 4. Dynamic Paneling Paneling is important to present your story in an engaging manner. The easiest way to do that is to use different angles and perspective in your webcomic. The best way to understand this is to watch TV shows and anime to see how they show different scenes and cuts. Typically, when a character is speaking, you can do a close-up on their face. This is to show the expressions and to make it obvious which character is speaking at that moment. Some panels would show a wide shot of the background and the characters to make your characters exist in the world they are in. 
One vice I dislike is that many comics forego backgrounds and make it white and empty. You can do that occasionally, but to improve on your storytelling, it's better for you to set the scene first so that your readers understand where your story takes place and where your characters are. If you find it hard to draw backgrounds, you can use SketchUp models and free assets on the Clip Studio asset store. I made a separate video on that. You can watch it after this video. I'll link it in the description later. You can watch it. So just add variety to your comic so that it looks interesting. One extra tip I learned from the creator of the guy upstairs is when you your characters are on the left side, make sure they're on the left side in the following panels. And if they're on the right side, uh, make sure they stay on the right. This is not to confuse your readers. Admittedly, I noticed myself that I am not following this tip in some of my episodes, but that's fine. I'm totally fine with it. Well, it's your webtoon, so you don't have to follow this kind of format for every scene. Number five, smooth transitions. When changing scenes or when you have a time skip, there are several ways you can smoothly move on to a new scene without it being so abrupt. One way is to leave a large gap between panels to show a new scene. Sometimes it's to show that time has passed or to create sp suspense in your comic. Another way is to add these rectangular shapes, not sure what they're officially called, to show that time has passed. A lot of manga creators use this method since it saves more space and easily understood to show a time skip. There are a lot of creative ways you can also transition into a new scene. You can use effects, backgrounds, and colors. I sometimes use a darker background color to show a flashback. Doing this makes it easier to understand what you're trying to convey to your readers to avoid confusion. So uh, that's all I want to talk about in this video. What are other advice that you'd, li you'd like me to talk about? I'm thinking my next video topic would be about making a historical fantasy webtoon and how I started and what I used and what tools I used, what brushes I used. I think uh, some people will find that interesting and I think it'll be fun. By the way, don't forget to check out my webtoon, Woes of a May Lead. It's my passion project. I'd appreciate it if you guys supported me. And yeah, see you in the next video.